Hello and welcome to Robotic Surgery Insights. I'm excited to be joined today by Anne Uzduit, CEO of Moon Surgical. Thanks for joining me today, Anne. Hi, Joseph. It's great to be here again. It's been about 12 months since we last interviewed you on the platform. I believe last time was just after you had closed your latest funding round. It's been amazing seeing the progress Moon has continued to make. For those new to our platform and our audience, could you start by providing a background to yourself, Moon and Maestro, please? Sure. Um, So hi, everyone. So I'm Anne. I'm the CEO at Moon Surgical. Uh, I'm a biomedical engineer by background. I was trained um, both in France and in the US. uh, And I've been in the medtech industry for over 20 years. Uh, And for the last four years, um, I have um, developed together with an exceptional team, um, Moon Surgical. Uh, I am also a partner at Sophie Nova Partners, um, specifically in charge of our MedTech um, Venture Builder. Uh, And Moon is one of the projects um, out of that MedTech Venture Builder called MD Start. Um, And it's the fourth um, MD Start portfolio company for which um, I am the CEO. Uh, In terms of Moon, so Moon started uh, based on uh, a concept that was invented by a surgeon uh, by the name of Professor Brice Gaillet here um, in Paris. Um, He had been collaborating with a lab in academia about um, really developing a collaborative robot uh, for soft tissue surgery. Um, So a robot which would operate together with the surgeon. Uh, as opposed to a robot which would um, replicate or you know translate um, instructions uh, from a surgeon from remote, um, and um, and so you know when when we started developing Moon, we we really took this concept which had been uh, you know incubated and you know. Um, basically prototyped um, in, in, in some sense in academia. And we, uh, we basically decided to, uh, uh, to make it a product, right? Which, which meant, uh, of course, you know, redesigning it so that it could be used into patients. Uh, and um, what we have achieved over the last um, few years is um, we've developed two versions uh, of that robot. Um, the first one that we call the first in human system, uh, which we took into the clinic. Um, we treated 55 patients with that system, uh, both in Europe and in the US. Uh, we got that system through CE Mark and FDA clearance, and then we shifted our efforts to what we call our commercial system, our commercial maestro system, um, which is the one that is currently used uh, in the clinic. Yes, so I'd like to talk about some of the milestones you've achieved since we last spoke over the last 12 months. And a good place to start is yesterday because there was a major announcement yesterday that the, yes, the commercial version of Maestro has now received FDA approval. How was the process this time round? Yeah, we're absolutely thrilled with the news uh, and, uh, you know, have been at it for, you know, a little while. Uh, if, if you, you know, add the development time of that system and then getting it through regulatory clearance, um, you know, the, the system itself um, is, um, in terms of its architecture and um, functionalities, very similar to our first in human system, right? Um, the first in human system was really made to, um, you know, test our assumptions, get feedback from surgeons, uh, and then understand the regulatory pathway, right? Um, and as we treated these 55 patients with the first in human system, we uh, learned about a number of things that we needed to change. Um, you know, one, you know, very simple example I'll give you is the way the instruments are attached to the arms of our robot. Uh, you know, for our first in human system, we used magnetic coupling, uh, which sounded like a great idea, but, uh, you know, in an operating room, you have a lot of metal, uh, metallic instruments. Uh, and so our magnetic couplers would create a mess and attach to stuff all around that was you know, not necessarily, uh, you know, um, um, easy to manage for the staff. 
Uh, and so one of the learnings uh, of, you know, that first inhuman system was we should change the way the instruments are attached uh, to the system. And so there were a series of changes that we made to the system based on the first inhuman experience. Um, there were a series of improvements that we made to the system based on, you know, getting it to a product that we could scale and manufacture at scale. Um, so, you know, it looks a lot better. Uh, it's uh, going to be a lot more reliable when we produce uh, many of them. Um, and then there, there were also all the changes that uh, were, I would say, induced uh, by um, the evolution in the FDA requirements, right, uh, between the two submissions. Um, and uh, for us, that meant mostly um, the cybersecurity requirements, uh, given that um, in between our two submissions, um, there, there was a new guidance from the FDA that was published. So what we had to manage in this latest submission were all these changes uh, and to educate and discuss with the FDA, um, you know, to make sure that they, they understood um, all the uh, associated testing that we had done um, for these changes. So, you know, it's, it's never easy and, and we're happy that uh, it's over. And to have done the CE mark only nine months before as well is a very good effort by the team. Yeah, totally. Uh, you know, different different requirements, uh, but uh, you know, once you're putting together the the, the technical file, um, you know, you might as well. And with um, and since CE mark, you've now there's now been more than two hundred procedures, patient procedures performed with the commercial version. Could you talk a bit about, um, yeah, just where, you know, the hospitals where the procedures have been performed? Is there a new round of learnings to take on board again? Yeah, sure. So, you know, it, it was very important for us to, um, you know, get feedback from um, our target setting and our target, um, you know, surgeon profile. Uh, you know, when we did the first in human, uh, we, we treated the first 50 patients um, in, in Brussels, in Belgium, in academia, right? Um, it just sounded like this was the most reasonable thing to do. Uh, it was the first time the system was, you know, ever used in a patient. Uh, and, and we felt this was, um, you know, a safe and appropriate environment for a commercial system. Um, we really wanted to be in a setting that would be a, little, a lot more representative of our target customers, right? Um, places where uh, it's not about clinical research, it's about, um, you know, it's about volume, it's about quality of care, it's about quality of life at work for the staff, uh, it's about staffing issues as well, uh, it's about finishing on time, uh, you know, so um, so we wanted to, to, to understand or to make sure that our assumptions, which were that, you know, this is basically our sweet spot and, and where we should be going, uh, was, was not uh, proven wrong. Uh, so we, we partnered with, um, you know, two sites in France, um, Polyclinique de Franche-Comté, which is a private clinic in Besançon, and then Institut Arnaud de Sanc in Nice, which is a high volume um, public private site uh, in, in the south of France, um, to uh, implement uh, those pilot sites, right? We, we had incredible surgeons at both places. Uh, who were looking for really ways to streamline, you know, their um, their procedures and and just to you know to make their lives easier, right? Uh, and um, and we were very eager to, um, you know, get real world evidence essentially, right? So we implemented what we call our post market um, registry, right, which consists in you know fully documenting what happens in the first hundred or hundred and fifty cases at each site, uh, and and then we let them use the system as they would use it routinely, right? So they turn it on in the morning, they use it for anything they have on schedule, they turn it off in the evening. And then we see what happens, what happens in terms of procedure duration, uh, what happens in terms of procedure variability, what happens in terms of the staff and resources in the room, and, and we observe and document uh, all of that. Uh, so, so it was quite an incredible experience, you know, at first in terms of 
um, you know, the adoption, right? Seeing that we, we went into these sites with one surgeon champion and within one, two, three, four weeks, each week you had a new surgeon getting onboarded on the system and, you know, poking their head, their, uh, you know, through the door and saying, hey, you know, I'd like to be trained and use this. And so we, we were very rapidly in a situation where we had four surgeons using the system at each site um, and ran into allocation issues, you know, because of course they all have you know, block time the same days and etc. But you know that that was a great um, a great problem to have. Um, the other thing that we observed, um, which was very comforting, was um, the learning curve. Right uh, within about three to five procedures, um, they felt super comfortable. Their procedure duration was um, you know what it would typically be, um, and then from that point, um, you know, it, it it got shorter and shorter. Um, and, uh, you know, we were, of course, there for a number of these procedures to collect the data, but, you know, we could miss our train and they would still do the cases throughout the day without, you know, any assistance needed. Uh, so that was another great learning. Um, and then in terms of the system, yes, of course, we, you know, the system, the training, um, I mean, anything that we really delivered and, and tested on site, we, we got a ton of feedback. Um, some of it, you know, is, um, you know, very easy to implement and well, actually has already been implemented uh, from the software standpoint. Um, and then some of it is, you know, more long term stuff that, that we're keeping in our books. And the, um, the number of indications that Maestro is being used in is also increasing. Yeah, that, that's a great point that I that I forgot to cover, right? It's, you know, one of the learnings uh, of these um, initial 200 patients and, and, and beyond is that, you know, the, the surgeons organically broaden their usage, right? Um, we, we went in, we have a broad clearance, uh, obviously, but we only had experience uh, with uh, digestive surgery and with um, select indications in digestive surgery from our first inhuman um, study, right? Um, not not by choice, really, but just because, you know, within these 55 patients, you know, there's only so much you can do, right? Um, so, yeah, the, the surgeons felt comfortable going beyond these indications very rapidly. And, and as I said, it, it was important for them to be able to do so because, um, you know, they... Uh, you know, you, you really only benefit from the system and what it implies in terms of workflow, in terms of reducing resources in the OR, if you are able to use it through your block time, right? I mean, if you use it for procedure one and four and, you know, six, then, you know, you, you have to go back and forth between the ways you, you organize yourself and, and you manage the, the operating room. Um, so it was a very natural thing for them. And so we've broadened the digestive indications significantly. We've pretty much used it on, on anything you can imagine uh, in digestive surgery at this stage. Um, and part of the surgeons who, uh, you know, basically requested to get trained and to start using the system were GYN surgeons. Um, so this is something that was completely new to us and, and where uh, the system has also now been used in, in a number of different indications. Great. And you, um, you mentioned earlier around new capabilities from the initial sort of learnings. One of the capabilities that has been had a lot of press is um, with your collaboration with NVIDIA around the um, computer vision based um, scope pilot. Could you, I guess two questions. One, could you talk around this new capability, but could you also talk a bit about the collaboration because you joined the NVIDIA Inception program back in 2021. So if you could talk a bit about that and also then the end solution. Sure. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll start speaking about, you know, the, the, the collaboration and how it started and, you know, and, and then get to the first feature um, coming out of it. Yeah, so we got into the NVIDIA Inception program, um, you know, three years ago, over three years ago, um, you know, thanks to, you know, I think their exceptional scouting capabilities as, as well as, you know, one of our engineers who uh, connected with, um, you know, their um, 
basically scout resource in, in Europe. Um, and, you know, they, they were looking for partners to really co-develop this medical grade GPU. And uh, we were looking for, you know, a way to embark, um, you know, edge computing uh, for like real time uh, features. And, uh, you know, there was an alignment there, right? Uh, we had a very aggressive timeline, uh, but they also had one and we kind of, you know, made sure that our plans were compatible and and, and got going. Uh, It's been an incredible R&D partnership. It's still ongoing. I mean, on a weekly basis, you know, our our teams are working together on on the next um, steps. Um, And so we were able to integrate um, NVIDIA's medical grade GPU into our commercial system. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's part of, of course, of the, of the clearance, right? I mean, it speaks to the speed at which NVIDIA can also get a completely new product, you know, developed and tested and, you know, integrated, etc. So it was, it was very impressive. Uh, and um, you're right, the, the first feature we, we developed and which is now running on, you know, this, um, this NVIDIA box, as we call it, is, uh, is the Scopilot. Uh, and, you know, the, the Scopilot is available in Europe. It's not uh, a part of the FDA clearance yet. Okay. Uh, so it's being used in, in these hundreds of patients uh, in Europe. And the principle is that um, you basically um, direct the, the scope movement based on, you know, a, an instrument um, that you define that is being moved um, on the laparoscopy screen, right? It's computer vision done in real time. Uh, you define which instrument you want the scope to follow. Uh, by just holding an instrument, activating the feature and holding an instrument still at the center of the screen. It, it pairs the feature with the tip of the instrument and then, you know, you can you can move the instrument around. Uh, the, the, the scope will, will follow that. I mean, of course, it's made so that it doesn't constantly move and, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's um, you know, appropriately, um, you know, dosed. Uh, but uh, it enables the surgeon to not have to um, uh, manipulate the scope by hand and reposition it, right? Which, which is very helpful in some specific sections of the procedure where they have to focus on dissection and don't want to take their hands uh, out of their other instrument. Um, so yes, this is a feature that has been used in, in Europe um, in, in many cases. Uh, it's an AI based feature, which means that, you know, of course, as our data set is getting richer, uh, the, the performance of the feature is, is getting better and better. Uh, and, uh, and we've been very pleased with the feedback. So uh, looking forward the plan is now to uh, introduce Maestro to sites across the US. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's the same in Europe and in the US. The the next, um, you know, nine, 12 months um, are about um, our limited market release, uh, which means, uh, you know, um, selecting the sites we're going to be working with. Uh, And, um, and, you know, as we equip these sites, um, you know, partnering with them on the data collection aspect. I mean, basically what this, you know, covers is um, the development of this post-market registry, right? Uh, These are commercial sites. Uh, They are sites that um, have, you know, approached us or, you know, the other way around. I mean, it it depends, but basically sites that uh, are not, um, you know, here to do a study. Uh, but we, what we want uh, out of this limited market release is a lot more data on the adoption of the system, its usage and routine, um, and uh, how to um, really substantiate and demonstrate uh, the return on investment model uh, and really um, you know, have some KPIs or metrics to illustrate um, the different benefits. Uh, so this is what we're going to be doing over the next few months. Um, as we're doing that, of course, we, we need to hire, uh, you know, people on the ground, on the sales uh, side, as well as on, as on the field service um, aspect. Uh, and um, in parallel, of course, ramp up manufacturing. So this is really the big focus uh, of the next few months. Well, yeah, thanks so much for freeing up some time to talk to me today and providing an update. And I look forward to keeping a uh... Yeah, keeping on track and keeping tabs with it.
Thanks a lot. Bye bye.